so thankful that I can give all that I have, all that I am, to He who loves me more than anything in the world. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trade all of my sorrows. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty for another opportunity that we have to share his word together today. The Bible says he sent for this word and his word healed and delivered us from all our destructions. I'm very confident in God that the word of God is already working in you and working for you. And I know that daily as he's loading us with his word, we will be too loaded in such a capacity that his power will be available in us because the Bible says that God will do as much as his power that worketh inside of you. So, if the word of God is working inside of you, God, you'll be able to see God. Because the more of revelation of God that you receive is the more of the manifestation of God that you see in your life. The more you know him, the more you will see him in your life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for such a time in your presence. Release your word to us. Let it work in us and work for us. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to continue on spiritual maturity. Because without you being matured, you can be the one that God can use for the assignment that he wants to use to round up the existence of men on planet earth. Listen to me. He began the beginning. He sustained the beginning. And he has promised to bring the beginning to an end. And so, whether you like it or not, he that began the beginning says the beginning is coming to an end. And you must get ready for that. Now, what am I saying tonight? is that you need to understand your own prophetic position in God's agenda according to his calendar for this world. And what is your prophetic position is that you must grow up spiritually to conform with God's program, master plan for the entire world. And what is this program? Is that he wanted to be a witness for him. He wanted to become an epistle man will read. He want Christ to be formed in you so that people will see you as the Christ of God in your own generation. When Jesus Christ came, he came as an example of how a son of God should be. How we should live, how we should talk, that no matter our situation and condition, he came to represent us, all right? To live a kind of life that we should live because he came to reveal to us the mind of God about how God wants us to live. Because if you look at him, if you check in the scripture, you find out that no situation overcomes him, but he overcame every situation. He had problem with those who are critics. He had problem with those who are called enemies and envious people, jealous people, all manner set of them. All right? He had problem with poverty. He had problem with dryness. All kinds of things happened to him. But listen, he overcame them by the word of God. And so, he's showing to us how to overcome. At Exodus 15 verse 3, Bible says, the Lord God is a man of war. The Lord is his name. If God is a man of war, what do you think you are? If you're God's son, oh, then you must get ready for war. In the book of Revelation 12 verse 7. Bible said there was a war in heaven. You know, who began the war in heaven? Satan, the devil. He was trying to overrule God. Trying to take his own throne above God's own. And God made him aware that I made you. I don't even need to fight with you. He said one of those things he made called angel Michael. He said you push him down. And that was the end of him. So he's saying to us that by virtue of our position in God, we can put the devil where he belongs. How? We don't need to carry him because he's not heavy. We don't need to push him because he's not so strong. He said, cast him out. All right? So at your word, the devil can be displaced if you are really positioned under God. If the word, which is called God, is inside of you. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. So when God is in you, then there's nothing you cannot do through God because the Bible says with God. Nothing is impossible. Luke 1 37. With God, not you alone, but with God. When you are connected with God, when you are joined to God, spiritual maturity is joining you to God, becoming one spirit with God. All right, and that is the way to victory. In the book of 1 John 4, verse 4, it said, Little children, you have overcome them because greater is He that lives in you than He that lives in the world. Now, who is the He living in you? Demons, devils, or God? All right, check that for yourself. In the book of Galatians 4, and verse number 18 to 19, it said, But it is good to be zealously affected 
Always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. Listen to me, in the world today, you find out that there are three kinds of services we render in the church as a believer. Number one, some render lip service, only talking about what they cannot even do. All right? While some render eye service. When their leader or their boss is with them, they work well. But when the man or the woman leaves, they begin to do what they like. And some render sincere act service. Now, which one are you rendering to God? Bible talked about reasonable service because there are some unreasonable services in the church. In the book of Romans 12 verse 1, it said, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice. Who is a living sacrifice? Somebody available for whatever God wants to use him or her for. Somebody who can abeyance their own ambition and take on the vision of God. Somebody who can close down their own shop or business center only to attend to God's business. All right? It's their living sacrifice because they are sacrificed unto God. He said, how do you do it? Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. There's a problem I found out in the world today. That Christians, many of us are only growing horizontally and not vertically horizontal growth is just growing among men or right? among men maybe you are the best because you are skillful you are performing as much as you can to be excelling all right but we need vertical growth growing on to the nature of god on to the stature of god because many are gifted and yet still frustrated many are gifted but they are not mature you see them sing gospel songs, but right inside of them, there's no maturity. They have no fellowship with God. And that's why when other young people follow them, they get close to them, you find out that some people are singing gospel songs, but they are smoking. In their hands, smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol. You know, some of them even have girlfriends, chains of them. Why? Because they have no spiritual maturity. They have not been able to come into God. Christ has not been formed in them. All right, let's see what happened in verse 19. Galatians 4. He said, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The purpose of spiritual maturity is to gather up what we call the formation of Christ inside of you. How is that happening? By what you hear and what you study about Christ. You know, information is what builds our status. When you go to school, what makes you an engineer is not the wall of the university. What makes you a medical doctor is not the uh, medical appliances that are available there. It's the information you receive that now told you what to do with what you are seeing and how to relate with the world around you and gives you principles or theories that, are, you know, that actually makes you qualify to call yourself an engineer or a medical doctor. Now listen to me. The same way, this Bible is what can make you change your status from an ordinary person to a son of God. It will build Christ inside of you. Because Christ is a gift. That was why the revelation of Christ is what Jesus Christ built the church upon. In the book of Matthew 16, from verse 18, he said, Upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. When you say building the church, the church is not the block work, it's not the building. It's not the canopy. The church is the people, the art of men, that can only be built by the word of God. Because Jesus Christ is the word of God manifested. Okay? Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was a God, and the word was God. Verse 15, in John chapter 1, it said, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So when the word of God becomes flesh inside of you, that's when Christ is formed in you. Now, it's a formation because you can't gather all the information at once. When you receive, thou shalt not lie. God doesn't want you to lie. Why? John 8, 44 says, If you lie, you have your father the devil. He is sinner from the beginning. He's a liar and the father of it. So he said, I don't want to be a son of the devil. Lying. So the day you found out that truth and you apply it to your life and said, I'd rather shut my mouth than tell a lie. That day, a formation has entered you because you allow your spirit to yield to the spirit of God. Are you with me? So now what the Bible says here, it said, until Christ be form you, I'll be travailing. Every pastor, every true pastor, because James 3.15 told us, who are your pastors? According to God's heart. He said, I will give you pastor after my heart and they shall teach you knowledge and understanding. Not just lay hands on you, not just tell you, take it or give you a prophecy, but they will teach you knowledge and understanding. Because if you lack knowledge, you lack understanding. Bible says in Osea 4 verse 6, it said, my people perish 
for lack of knowledge. People don't perish because of the anointing. Not lack of anointing, but lack of knowledge. Listen to me. Because you can have anointing and still perish. You know why? Christ said something. He said, hmm. Many will come to me that day and said, In your name we cast out devils. In your name we did all manners of healing. And he said, Get it behind me. You workers of iniquity. I don't know you. That means when you lack spiritual maturity, you don't know Christ. You may have the gift which is given to you not because you are better. Listen to me. I don't tell them in church. I say, Listen, as a pastor, I'm not better than you. I'm also working on my salvation daily because there's an instant salvation, there's a continuous salvation, there's eternal salvation. All this is scriptural. You know? Now, instant salvation is the day you receive the word of the Lord. He said, when you hear his voice, add in your heart, accept him, and then you are born again that day. Good. You are saved. But that's instant salvation. There's a continuous salvation. You shall be saved as long as you do what actually makes you walk worthy of the Lord. That's the righteousness. The Bible says that he that doeth righteousness is righteous. There's a righteousness given to us as a gift, which is by grace. Which means because say the day you got born again. But there's a righteousness that you must do. Living according to right things that Christ already has stipulated. He's a lifestyle that a believer should live. And then there's an eternal salvation which is the day you leave this world. You don't need, you are not going to pray anymore. You're not going to need to be preached to anymore. So you are eternally saved the day you die if you die in the Lord. Okay? Now what am I talking about here is that you really need to grow. Spiritual maturity is knowing God for yourself. Is coming into the knowledge of God. That knowledge is not what you hear and you just apply. It is what you hear, you know, and you fellowship with. God wants your fellowship. Not just your association, but your submission. You listen to him, you believe him, you follow him. He said, follow me, then I will make you fishers of men. Not all people he made. All right? Because not everybody followed him. Some were healed, but they are not his disciples. So healing is not the major thing. Deliverance is not the major thing. What matters is your spiritual maturity. Get close to him. And you know what? When you get close to him, whatever he needs to break off your life, he breaks them. It's not a major concern for God. No, 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 no. He will lose you because he wants to use you. All right? Deliverance is sure when you come into the fold. Deliverance, healing is sure when you come to the fold. He cannot want to use your hand and he allow the devil to amputate the hand or make the hand wither. He will release you from that one. And listen to me. So now what the Bible is saying here is that Christ must be formed in you. You need the formation of Christ. It's a gradual process. When you hear about this, you apply it, you walk by it, you fellowship with God in it. All right? Make it a major prayer point to want to be like Christ. That was why Paul said that I may know him, that I may fellowship with him. He said, and the power of his resurrection. Then the next thing is for you to determine, to suffer, and to pay whatever it will cost you to be righteous and to live godly in this present world. Spiritual maturity is for you to make up your mind, to suffer for him, and to make up your mind to do all it will cost you for you to live a godly life. Let's see the Bible. 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 12. 2 Timothy 3 and from verse number 12. Look at this. Very interesting. It said, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you want to live godly in Christ Jesus, get ready to suffer persecution. He said they will hate you because they hate me. Why? Their ways are not my ways. Alright? But if you want to live godly, then you will suffer persecution. Now, you must understand this truth that there are things to suffer for him. There are things to go through. There are things to bear because of his name. There are areas where it will seem as if you were cheated. Only for his name's sake. But listen to me. If you can allow it. Bible says that don't mind the light affliction that you go through. He said because it is working for you a far more eternal weight of glory. There is a glory to come if you can suffer for him. He said that in that book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 4. And it says that in verse 17. He said for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So you keep your attention on God and not on facts around you. They may deny you your right. It's only for a moment. Because the one who knows your right will claim your right back for you. 
I'm telling you sincerely. And so you need to just please him with your life. So spiritual maturity is your determination to suffer or to pay whatever it will cost you to live godly in this present world. All right, the next one is that spiritual maturity is endurance. My goodness, there are things to endure. Listen, you don't endure what is good because you only enjoy what is good. You endure what is not good. What, you, what is not comfortable for you. What you can't bear, your flesh detest it. But God said, go through it. Let's see what the Bible says, Second Timothy chapter 2. There are some go through you need to go through before you can have a breakthrough in God. And that's what we're talking about. Second Timothy chapter 2, and from verse number 1. It said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast had of me among many weaknesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Who are faithful men? He said, they shall be able to teach others also. Are you a faithful person? What makes you faithful? What you have learned from Christ, you are teaching others also. But if you are the dead end of divine information, you are not faithful. And I said, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. Many today are banana Christians. You know banana? If you cover banana, if it's under pressure, it will melt. It will become water. Some are also like salt. Cover them somewhere, they will melt. Some are like a wheelbarrow. You load them with every good. They've got tired, but they can't move themselves. They need somebody to carry them, lift them, push them. Don't be a Christian that needs to be visited before you come to church. Some of you are even angry with your pastors. Eh, I didn't come last Sunday. They didn't even call my number. They didn't even visit me. If it were this one, if it were that one, you are picking on people. You are envious. You are jealous. You are causing divisions. Oh my goodness. That shows your immaturity. That shows you don't know what you are in for. That shows you don't know who you belong to. Who's that you are. Now, if you are matured, you will be ready to endure as a good soldier of Christ. A soldier. Have you seen soldiers under training? Hmm. Those who only like to be a soldier and they don't have what it takes to be a soldier, they die during training because they build them to last. Because, hear me, they prepare them for battle. Wars that are coming that have not happened now. They make them do all manners of bodily exercise to build their muscle, to get used to what we call endurance. Listen to me. What endurance do you have spiritually? If you pray this week and there's no answer, don't you give up easily? And the easiest way to fail in life and in spiritual things is to give up. To say, oh no, God is not doing it. I've waited. Who told you? Even God waited for you to be born again. That's why you got born again finally. If he never waited for you, you will have been forgotten because he will have passed his judgment concerning your case. Beloved, spiritual maturity is about endurance. You got to learn how to endure. Verse 4 says, No man worried, entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Somebody chose you to be a soldier. You know, God often gives the strongest battles, the hardest situations to his strongest soldiers. God is trusting you. That's why you're having too many troubles. God is trusting you to break this limitation in your family. That's why you're in the midst of it. That's why you never chose this family. He brought you into this family to end the trouble you met there. There are curses you need to cancel. That's why you're born again. There are things that must start anew through you. You are a pace setter. You are a frontliner. You are a revised standard version of your own family. And God sent you there for a purpose. God sent you as a savior in your family. As a savior in your generation. Listen, don't overlook unrighteousness. Correct it. Confront it. Challenge it and change it. That's why you're here. So God is saying here, he said, whosoever want to war does not get distracted by the affairs of this world, but they concentrate on the assignment given them. Because at battle, it's either you kill or they kill you. And that's why you got to be very much positioned in your heart to understand that you are God's soldier. He chose you to be one. And because he chose you, you must do his pleasure. Because no country enjoys it. In fact, let me even say this. No country enjoys it when their footballers go to another football, I mean, after a football match, and they come back losing. Nobody likes losers. Even you, you don't like to lose, and God doesn't want you to lose. God will not enjoy it if you lose after staying on act for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, good for nothing. God wanted to bring a change. That's why you're here. You are a revolutionary. You are a solution provider. Understand that. You are here to put order to life. And that's why you must not be a problem. 
You must not be an offense creator. You must not be a problem, you know, creator. But you must be a problem solver. And you must understand this through the scripture that you are a soldier chosen by God to remedy the tragedy you met in your family. Now it says there, it said, And if any man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. There's a lawful way to strive. There's a lawful way to fight. There's a lawful way to walk with God. Oh, being a believer under grace does not give you room for lasciviousness, carelessness, doing things anyhow. Because under grace you can do anything. Listen to me. Don't abuse grace. If not, you will face this grace. Don't misuse grace. Grace is to build you to become great in God, in Christ, for the purpose of why you were sent. Beloved, it's time for you to understand that you got to mature spiritually. Alright? Stop all this complaint. Now, I, I often tell people, you are able to see a fault somewhere because there is something in you that gave a judgment that this is not correct. That thing that gave you the judgment that that thing is not correct, that means God has built you or wired you to correct it. Don't criticize or complain. Go there, ask for permission and give your suggestion. Give your advice. Because sometimes some people, even because they feel they know too much, their pride has not given them opportunity on the stage of life. God hates pride. Go ahead. Correct. You are there for that purpose. When you see what is wrong, what is not working all right, go there. Give your contribution before your time is over. And the Lord will bless you. Now, the next definition I will give you about maturity is becoming a living sacrifice for Christ. Becoming a living sacrifice. Living for Christ alone and living, not living for yourself. And you can find that in Romans 12 verse 1 and verse 2. In verse 2 of Romans 12, it said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So renew your mind because your thought life is your life. Your thought is truly who you are. That's what the Bible says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right? The next one is the ability for you to discipline your tongue. A sick tongue gives back to a sick life. Many don't know how to use their tongue. In the book of James chapter 3, let's hear what the Bible says. You know, what we call battles in this world are all product of the tongue. Because there's no war without words. It is words that produce war. The battle, generational battles. You know, in my new book, you need to get it. It's, it, it, it. The title is From Jungle to a Beautiful Garden. Your life will be a jungle if you don't know how to use your tongue. Because what can sort things out is the right use of your tongue. He you remember God, he saw the situation of the world that it was without form and void. He said, let there be light. He sort it out. He said, let this be. He sort it out. So what you say affects your life. Matthew 12 verse 37. He said, with your words, you can be justified. With your words, you can be condemned. What are you bringing to your life? Condemnation or justification? Alright? The Bible also said in Proverbs 13 verse 3. He said, he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. That means <laughs> your life is totally dependent on your mouth. Okay? Now let's see what the Bible says in James chapter 3. I want to read from verse number 2. It said, for if any in many things we offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body if you can control your mouth god said you can control your life if you can be careful what not to say or what to say at a given time god said you can be able to bridle your body also now listen to me your mouth is so powerful it's a world of its own all right it's creative god authorized your mouth to control life and death much i mean proverb 18 21 and so you must be careful what comes out of your mouth your mouth can issue life it can also issue death spiritual maturity is known by the content of your statement what is contained in what you're saying what are you saying about what you are seeing what are you saying to people you are looking at or you are hearing from listen your contribution through your statement your conversation is what actually portray you whether you are matured or you are not matured the bible says our conversation is in heaven all right where's your conversation coming from is it from earth is it from devil because bible says it is god that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure so what am i saying here your your words matters your word your tongue is very powerful bible said the tongue is a little member and it busted great things behold how great matter a little fire kindled your tongue is very powerful. Your tongue can raise you. Your tongue can break you. Your tongue can present you as a good personality. And people can hate you for what came out of you. Many people have good look, but they have bad tongues. You need to tame your tongue. Train your tongue. Train it according to the scripture. Because if you cannot train your tongue, you cannot train your body and your soul. And God will not entrust into your care 
people to train for him. And so, beloved, your spiritual maturity matters because God wanted to advance from elementary. He wanted to become better than you are right now. The final definition I will give you today about maturity is your right attitude to the things of life. Your right attitude to the things of life. How do you handle money? Bible, give, Bible says God gives you to give, not giving you to keep. He said give and it shall be given to you. So the more you give, the more you get. But some have this attitude of greediness and stinginess. All right? They keep things for themselves. They are nip-driven and greed-driven. Listen to me. God wants you to have a right attitude to the things of life. 1 Peter 1, 22. 1 Peter 1, 22. And the Bible says that he said, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the spirit unto unfailing love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Love people. Love one another with a pure heart fervently. Before you do things to people, consider if it were you, what would you want people to do for you? All right? When you are living in such a spiritual control of your heart, I tell you, you are living a matured life. Beloved, God depends on you. God is trusting you for his assignment on earth. Are you trustworthy? Can God depend on you? Let us pray. If you have not given your life to Jesus, if you don't match this class of maturity, because the first thing to do is to surrender the control of your heart to him. Can you do that just now? Say these prayers after me. Lord Jesus, I know that you are the Lord. I submit to you as the Lord. I hand over the control of my heart unto you. That from today, you are the Lord of my soul. I will serve you. I will follow you. I will obey you all the days of my life. No turning back. From today, receive me with love. Embrace me with grace. Let my past pass away. Forgive me all my sins. I will do them no more. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. I pray for you today. Every power of sin, every power of destruction, I break them off your life. And I connect you to the flow of God's grace. And to the flow of God's power. That from today, you will live a meaningful life. A matured life. Growing and growing. We train up. We grow up. Only dying is going down. And so from today, you will not die. Spiritually, physically, mentally. But you will grow up. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You know, I'm so thankful that I can give all that I have, all that I am, to He who loves me more than anything in the world. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trade all of my sorrow. Joy.